that we will be in serious trouble uh, in terms of climate change and the environment. Wind power or electricity is, uh, is an essential ingredient in development. Literacy, in fact, if you want to read in the evening when you're in the, in the home, you need lights. Um, but literacy education is, is critically important. Health care services, uh, transportation for access to goods and services, and energy power for communication purposes. So let me tell you a story about Rwanda. Now you remember back in 1994, Rwanda was reeling from the biggest genocide in human history. Um, now it's almost, um, it's almost a, a computerized nation. It's almost entirely digital. It's moved in the space of, uh, of a few years um, from being an entirely agrarian economy through to uh, a services-based economy. They're starting to build computers, they're starting to, uh, to get involved in online services. Slowly but surely, uh, they're, they're catching up with, uh, with, with, the, with the developed world. Villages in Africa put up a small wind turbine or two. That means they don't have to move to an urban center. They can stay in their village and they can live there, get the internet, they can get educated. So that's a, a truly a dispersed and enabling technology that, that changes demographics. People go to the, uh, to the cities to get connected to the market economy. Uh, many of the large cities are unable to uh, transport people around to get them access to jobs and, and goods and services. People spend hours a day in congested uh, traffic. If we have energy services and, and the other services, communication especially, in the rural areas, there's not so much a driver for them to have to go to the cities. Fossil fuels lend themselves to a central market. Renewables, on the other hand, are distributed everywhere. You find them locally close to where you need the energy. So wind and other renewables really do reinforce more of a sustainable lifestyle. Every deal we make, we want to be win-win. Win for you, win for us, and win for the utility. In Africa, one of the big problems they have is, is employment. So if we can offshore the most heavy part of the, the system, that'd be the tower, to local manufacturers, we think that's a win-win. We don't have to pay for shipping from North America. They actually have jobs over there. They take ownership of the tower uh, manufacturing, so they're learning skills that are important. And uh, what we would do then is just ship a small crate with the turbine and the battery charger or inverter to Africa, and then they would deal with the, the tower. So to us, it makes sense logistically, and it makes sense in the empowerment sense too. This is a huge difference for them. Going from no power to some power is a big difference. You're going from basically, you know, Stone Age man to 1930s Midwest North America. That's a big leap in technology. And a lot, a lot of things you can do with that. You can get better education. You get interconnected to the world better. Cell phones, you can charge your cell phone at your house now. You can actually have a cell phone. Those sort of things are, are very important, I think, for just basic standard of living. Wind power and clean technology for power we see as, as a major opportunity. It's a green growth uh, opportunity for the economy. So once we shift gears and, and move to wind power, we'll actually see uh, a, a strong economy and a much more sustainable future. I believe we're on the S-curve of product adoption. I went through it with Qualcomm. I got down there on the lower part of the S-curve. There was massive adaption of uh, wireless technology through the late 90s and early 2000s, and now they're on the, the, the top peak of it. 
I think wind turbines are on the same curve. We're just at that, just the beginning of the mass adaption of wind turbines. So will it take five years or 20 years? I'm not sure. There's millions of customers out there that don't have one. We're at this point in, in our world where it is a question of efficiencies and technological advancements. And there, I don't believe there's a silver bullet for, for that solution. So um, we need those, those, those uh, innovative and, uh, and uh, you know, driven people and entrepreneurial people to help develop those technologies, uh, help them get to market. It's a very comforting thing to see a wind turbine back out there. It's a good feeling. It's a genuine, real feeling. Um, you know, that we're doing something to help the environment. We're doing something to help the rural customer, Joe Farmer. Wind power plays a very important role in our future energy needs. It's environmentally clean. It's, it's a technology that has a high degree of acceptance among our customers. And there's an expectation that utilities like Sask Power will do whatever they can to deploy wind power for meeting our future supply needs. In terms of our energy future, I think this, this is, is, is an answer. I think we need some education for those people who are consumers, but we also need some incentives. So I think that uh, Daryl has stepped into this scene at a good time because our present government, uh, provincially and federally, have some incentives in place. Hopefully they stay in place. And I think those are the kinds of things we need to encourage people to participate in this process. One of the challenges we face is that fossil fuel generation has been subsidized. It puts alternative energy in, in a situation where they can't compete. And so some of the policies and, and regulations need to be changed in order to level the playing field. Governments and utilities are extremely important in this whole equation. So if you don't have the right policies in your state or province, it's going to be almost impossible to connect it to the grid. But even for third world places or places in North America or Europe where there is not congenial policies, it's important to lobby to get those policies changed. People talk a lot about visionaries, they use it almost as a cliche now. That guy's a visionary, you know, he knows where he's going. But there's actually a meaning to it. It means that you can see further than everyone else. And people think you're nuts and you're crazy and you're, you know, you're working on something that's like a folly that's going to get you nowhere. But these guys see maybe four or five generations on and see where it's going to end up. Um, and that's the real definition of an entrepreneur. Somebody who loves what they do, who, who can't be shaken from it, and someone sees where it might be going further along the line. This whole idea of doing small wind turbines is not about the money. It's about changing people's lives, it's about changing our environment or changing, changing the way we live. This product should revolutionize the world. The, the dream was to design a turbine that was lower cost than what I had been quoted, and it took a life of its own. It's been quite an experience since that first day where I thought I could do better than what's out there. And when you drive down the highway as much as I do and you see these derelict towers, you think, wouldn't it be something to have a turbine at every farm? That is happening. When I drive around now, I can point out our turbines almost on every highway. There's one somewhere. And as time goes on and through the years that we've struggled and looking ahead, I know we'll get more and more out there. It's a dream that's becoming a reality and that's really the fun part of this whole adventure. <laughs>